Hey everybody, it's Mike AK, that reseller guy, coming to you with another video on a Monday morning. Got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. It looks like the lighting is pretty good. We've got a lot of blue going on. Yeah, let's get going. All right. Yeah, what are we talking about today? Monday morning. Monday morning, usually we're talking about sales, what sold on eBay over the weekend. But I got a couple other topics I want to talk about today. One is we ran a garage sale over the weekend. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I picked up some cool stuff here over the last couple of days and uh, a little update on the promoted listing, relisting, sell similar project that I've been working on. You can watch my videos the last couple of weeks. We're into week two of that. So has any have any of those items sold? Uh, you're going to have trouble talking today. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, let's get into sales. Now, last weekend was horrible. Last weekend was terrible for sales. I think I sold like 200 and some dollars for the weekend. Terrible, terrible, terrible. This weekend was better. Fueled by one pretty big sale. So that, that definitely helped. I sold 15 items for about $900. So that's back in the correct realm of where we should be selling things over the eBay weekend. Now, I did list a lot better last week. I think I got 10 items each or maybe even more on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I think I even got like eight on Friday. Nothing. I don't think I listed anything on Saturday because that's when we were having the garage sale. And then Sunday I listed, uh, I don't know, six or eight things as well. So I uh, had a pretty good week of listing, at least for me, you know, at least getting those 10 items a day, like I said. If I'm hitting that target number, my sales generally are, are pretty good in that range of what I need them to be. So uh, happy that that happened. Happy that I got those listings done. And happy that I have enough stuff to actually list that much. Because sometimes that's a struggle to get 10 quality listings. I don't want to just list 10 things just to get listings out there. I at least want to list stuff that I think is going to sell. And uh, I did. So uh, we got sales over here. Now, the title of this video is going to be uh, an eBay auction gone wrong or eBay auctions gone bad. Something like that. I haven't worked out the exact details yet. I'm, I'm just in the filming portion of this video. But uh, I ran two auctions last week. They ended on, I think, Friday night, Friday or Saturday. I don't know. It doesn't really matter for the story. Uh, but we got them right here. I'm going to show you the, the difference between the two and... Uh, See if you can figure it out and help me figure out why one went for more than the other. Now, uh, bids. Bids is the reason why. All right, I'm not going to hold up the whole stack. Here's what the whole stack looks like. It's a big stack of cards. Uh, but I'm just going to do part because otherwise I'll end up dropping them and I don't want to do that. So uh, I listed a bunch of Star Trek. This is Star Trek right here. You can see the logo. White border uh, TCG or CCG, which means trading card game or collectible card game, just like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, all that. So uh, every franchise pretty much has their own game. So uh, we had those, a big bunch of white border cards. You can see all of these have the white borders on them. And then I also listed a lot, same sort of thing, except for these all have the black borders on them. Now the black border ones did have two special foil cards and some of these little trouble with tribbles cards and even had like a Captain Kirk. One there. So there's 300 cards in each of those two lots. Similar lots, 300 cards. Now, the white border ones are a little bit older. I think these are from like the late 90s, and these are from like 2000s, if my listings are correct. Listed them both as 99 cent starting bid auctions. Just let them run. And part of the reason I did that, I don't run a lot of auctions, but sometimes I don't really know where to price some of these lots, don't really know what they're going for. And I just rather have them gone sometimes. I have a whole box down here. Let me show you the box. I still have a bunch more of these cards. So I still probably have at least two, if not three more lots of 300 cards that I can do. So I wanted to kind of see what the market was for them. Uh, this is where it went bad. One lot sold really well. The other one didn't. Which one? Guess. Which lot? White border, black border. Which one do you think went for more? Black border. Yeah, maybe it was because there was a couple foils in here. Maybe that's the reason why. Uh, this one sold for like $20, I think it was like $20.50, something like that. You'll see when I throw the pop-up on the screen of the two of them. This one, opening bid, $0.99 cents plus shipping. So uh, after the cost of shipping and fees, I'm pretty much just giving these cards away. I'm not making any money on those cards, uh, but I am making money on this lot. But here's what I'll say. Let's say each lot sold for $10. I would have been happy. I would have been like, okay, I got $10 each lot. That's fine whatever. I still got $10 for each lot. I got $20 total. Just one guy I'm not making any money on and the other guy I am. So uh, that's where my eBay auction gone bad is. Got only the 99 cent opening bid. You never want just that one opening bid, but that is the risk of doing 99 cent auctions. Now, back in the day, I used to run penny auctions. When auctions were the big thing, I would just start everything at a penny. I, 
even less. That's less than 99 cents. So if you got that penny opening bid plus shipping, oh, those times that you would lose money on the sale. I don't think I'm going to lose. Uh, I think I charge like nine dollars for shipping. And maybe, you'll, maybe you saw on the pop up. I think it's nine dollars for shipping plus a dollar for the card. Throw in the fees, shipping. Yeah, it's going to be close. It's going to be close on that one. Uh, I'll put in this video. I'm, I'll ship these things out before I do the full editing in this video, and I'll put it right here whether I made money or lost money. I'll, I'll calculate all the fees and we'll either put a plus or a minus up there uh, what that lot turned out to be. So I still got $20 total for all of those Star Trek cards at auction. That's what it was. But yeah, that's the risky take. 99 cent auctions. They can go bad sometimes. All right, but I did sell some other cool things. Uh, not a lot of sports cards. I only sold a couple card things. Let me actually put that baseball down. For as many cards as I have listed, hundreds if not probably thousand cards no i don't think i have quite a thousand cards but i have a lot of cards listed I only sell two card things that's that was kind of a sad sales weekend first one up cynthia cooper rookie card this is like a little subset card so this one's 2.99 free shipping so again I'm, I'm making more on this card than i am on that 99 cent star trek winning bid lot so a 2.99 free shipping now this set here this was pretty good it was a little collection that i bought of cards uh last week so i was getting some of them listed the 1990s had the best sports card. I, I'm not a big fan of, of super ultra modern cards that have been made the last few years. I'm a huge fan of cards from the 1990s. That's the, the, the heyday of cards and when some of the inserts were really cool. The, this set, get it without the glare, is called Gronks. Yeah, not that Gronk, but Gronk. I think that, I think back then were Gronks, like guys that hit home runs, or they called Gronks were the home runs. I don't know. I'll have to look up that term. But... Uh, yeah, here's what the back of the cards look like. You had Tony Clark when he was with the Tigers. There's Jeff Bagwell. I think this has Griffey and McGuire and like all the good guys from, from the 90s. Really cool set. This sold for $50 plus shipping. So really good sale on that set. Like I said, I picked that up as part of a collection, a bunch of insert sets from the 90s and listed a couple of those on eBay. The rest will probably sell in my collectibles slash sports card booth. All right, now that baseball I was holding... This is actually a Major League Baseball, uh, one that was used during a game. So players actually played and pitched with this game. And the reason you know that, because it has a little sticker right there from MLB. And you can go up, there's a little number on there. I don't know if you can see it when I have that close. You can go onto the MLB website, look it up. You can see what game it was played in. And a lot of times they'll even say, like, who pitched the ball or who hit the ball or what happened on the play where they took this ball out of the game. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool thing that Major League Baseball does. Uh... I think this sold for 20 bucks, $20 plus shipping on that one. Uh, I think I bought that at the local sports auction. We have uh, that. We used to have it once a month. It's been a lot less frequently over the last six months. But uh, but yeah, I bought that there. These items I showed in a haul video last week. But I got these frag grenades. Yeah, I'm, I'm shipping some frag grenades international. I don't know if that's legal. Luckily, they're just toys. They're just toys, people. Relax. I'm shipping them to Canada. Sure, there's some people that would like to ship frag grenades up to Canada, but that's what I'll be doing. Hopefully, they'll get across the border. These are just little rubber, uh, I think they're for like a laser tag game. I think maybe you would put these little grenades out, so you got a little flashing light on there, you'd set them out. Maybe the person ran by and you could hit people in the game. I think it was called Recoil was the game. Picked these up for five bucks. I knew it wasn't going to be a huge profit item, but I knew they would sell pretty quickly. So I bought them for five, they sold for 15, going up to Canada the international shipping program. I'm definitely happy that I'm shipping these to Canada through that shipping program because I don't want to get any international incident shipping some frag grenades up to Canada. I'll let eBay's people deal with that. All right, what else did I sell? Uh, really cool. USA hat. Still got the tags. Love finding hats with the tags. What did this one say? Visions of gold on the side. Uh, I'm sure I could figure out uh, when this was. Colorado Olympics. So uh, Colorado Olympics. What it says right there, what the hat looks like, uh, 25 bucks, $25 free shipping. First pick sports, never heard of first pick. As far as hats go, maybe they uh, have a deal or a contract with the Olympics. That's why they did those, but that's a nice looking hat. We got the Olympics coming up here not too long, so I'm sure that's probably why that one sold. All right, the smallest item, tiniest item that I sold is right here. Yeah, I'm a video game seller. Check this out. I sold me a Disney Princesses game for the DS. Now, this game shockingly, shockingly has some value. And actually, let me see. There's another little part back here. Let me see. Oh, there was a case back here. Uh, it's part of my story, and I'm, it's ruining it because I can't find the case. 
Anyway, uh, I bought a different game, a different, a different DS case, and this game was in it. I kind of got fooled because it was also a, a Barbie game, but it's just a different one. So this is Barbie 12 Dancing Princesses. I think that's what it is. You'll see in the pop-up. $17.99, and I think it was free shipping on that one. So I think it was $18 free shipping for that uh, little cartridge. So I'll just uh, put this on a little piece of cardboard, protect it a little bit, throw it in a bubble mailer, and uh, it'll get there safely. Now, did I test it? No, I don't have a DS to test it. I've sold hundreds of video games on eBay. Never test. Well, I shouldn't say never. Some of the Wii games I've tested it because I'll bring a Wii out and I'll and I'll test some of them and play them for a little while. Do some do some testing uh, for an hour. And uh, yeah, I've never had a game return. Never had a game return because because it hasn't worked. As long as the disc is clean, never had a problem. Some games maybe you want to clean the pins if they look dirty, but otherwise, just just ship it out. It's probably going to be good. Uh, speaking of games, this was a thrift store pickup. Yeah, on Super Mario Galaxy 2. Great pickup. So very shocked when I saw any Mario game on the shelf at a thrift store. I was actually with my daughter that day. Not that that means, means anything to the story, but uh, yeah, her and I dropped in a store real quick, found it, and look, complete with the manual. The disc was clean. Pretty amazing. Uh, this is sold for $25 uh, plus shipping on that one. Now, I do sell video games at my collectibles booth, but I'm trying to keep those at like, $15 and less, anything above that, I'm probably going to sell on eBay. Oh, I don't really have to worry about theft. Uh, I'm always afraid that people are just going to steal the more expensive games. Now, at my booth, I do seal these. I do seal them in my shrink wrap machine, I'll, I'll call it. So you can't just open the disc because at, at Goodwill's all the time, you see empty cases where people have probably just stolen the disc. But uh, it's a long story to say I got $25 for that game. I don't remember the exact price. Stores around here price games kind of all over the place. Uh, but generally, they're like $3.49 to $5.49 is where most of the games are. So I'm going to say I paid $5 for that one. Uh, another sort of cheap sale, but uh, to keep the media uh, thing going, we got the Beatles Love CD from the show up in Vegas. Well, maybe they show it other places than Vegas. I'm not sure. Uh, I've never seen it. But I'm sure it's fantastic. Uh, seven dollars and fifty cents plus media mail shipping of four dollars. I, I paid a dollar for it. Not not making a lot of money, but I'm making some money, right? Some money's always good. A couple more items back here. Another sports thing. We sold Joe DiMaggio. Oh, geez, glare all over this thing. Uh, Joe DiMaggio bobblehead. Now there is a card back behind right here. So you got the little card with a bobblehead. See, do, do you think that looks like Joe DiMaggio? Oh, can I get it without the glare so you can tell? It really doesn't, but it's got a card with it, bobblehead, new in the package, $20 plus shipping for Joe. Uh, strangest, strangest sale of the day. This guy, this guy. Have you ever sold one of these for Staffordshire? 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 I don't know. I'm probably wrong, but I'll say Staffordshire. Uh, this little jug, jester jug or mug, whatever you want to call it. I think I called it a jug. That's what other people were listing them as. I don't think anybody's really going to drink out of this. Really weird, weird looking thing, but anytime I see a marking on the bottom and it's made in England, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up because it could have a little bit of value. Now, I did have it marked at 25 I marked, had it listed on eBay for 25 bucks, and I sent a bunch of offers over the weekend. I'm sending offers pretty much every day. Whether I'll send a group out one day that I'll be like, hey, I'll just 10% off on these items I'm fine with, and then I'll go through the next day. And there's items I'm a little more interested in getting rid of. I'll throw a 15, 20, maybe even 25% discount on, you know, few items. And then just kind of flip-flop back and forth day to day. <sighs> but this sold for 20 bucks, $20 in change. So I think they got 15 or 20% off that $25 initial price. I uh, have to protect that pretty good. Uh, a couple more sales, a couple more, including the really big one. That one I, that one I haven't, uh, haven't finished up yet. Uh, sold my timer. Showed this in the video last week as well. Electronic water heater timer. Man, any sort of timer, whether it be for sprinklers, for water heaters, these things can generally, gener that word didn't come out right, generally uh, bring some good money. Uh, Intermatic, I guess that's going to be a good brand. This thing is actually pretty heavy. This is probably at least two, two plus pounds. Uh, sold for 60 bucks. 60 bucks plus shipping for this one. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff going international. What did I what did I forget is going international today? Oh well, we knew these these were going to uh, Canada. Uh, the other thing is going to go to Hong Kong, 
And I, one of these other items is going international as well. Now it's bugging me. Now it's bugging me. I'm going to have to go look. I remember what it was. All right, we'll get back to, we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, but that is not going international. That's going somewhere here. Uh, this next one is, and this is, this is the big sale of the day, the big item. It is big literally and figuratively in any way you want to look at it. Boom, look at the size of this box. RMS Lusitania. Yeah, I picked this up with another model kit about two weeks ago. Now, that other model kit already sold. It was, it was still a pretty big model. And actually, I showed you how I packed that one up in the last video because that one sold for like $40. This one was, I think, $8 in the store, and I was blown away when uh, I saw the price of it. Now, here's one thing I'll show about this. Uh, this was sort of a generic model that was made for several different companies. Now, mine was Mr. Hobby. You'll see this actual model kit with a couple different brands up here. So they must have just sold the rights off of it, and you could just get your own company uh, model name on the box. So I'm going to show it to you because this was new open box. I, I opened it all up just to check it, just to make sure, show all the parts in there because selling, selling something for this expensive, uh, I didn't want to uh, be wrong. Now, it doesn't look that impressive when you open it up, uh, but this also had a little bonus feature. Had these little gold metal decals. Now, this didn't come with a set. This was something that uh, the person that originally had this must have bought separately. So there's a bunch of little gold foil stuff that you can uh, add on to your ship to make it look better, cooler, uh, more detailed. And it had a special step-by-step -step guide printed out about how you make this model, which it did have the instructions, but uh, someone online, probably whoever had this model originally, went and printed those out. So I got to put all that in the description. And you know where this thing's going? This thing is going to Hong Kong. Now, I'm not shipping it to Hong Kong. I'm shipping it to Illinois. But I am going to show you how I'm going to box this thing up because this is a big honking box. And uh, yeah, now they make these things out of flimsy cardboard. This cover, super flimsy. Luckily, the bottom of the box is pretty sturdy. Just the cover is, is flimsy on this one. So I will show you, I may not show step by step, but I'm going to show you how I got this thing boxed up uh, for shipping. So big sale today. Did I say how much it sold for? $300 plus only 20 bucks for shipping. I didn't want to go crazy on the shipping and put $50 shipping. Sometimes that just scares people away. So I got $320 shipped for that. Now, I'm guessing going to Illinois, it's going to cost you more than 20 bucks. I'm okay with that. Just factor that all into my price. $300 for that. Great sale. That definitely helped make the weekend. So very, 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 very happy about that sale. Now, right, future Mike jumping in here. I got a box that I'm going to use for this, but you can see it's still a little bit longer than this box. And there's a lot of extra room. If I were to ship this thing and it's going to... Illinois, it'll probably cost me like 60, 80, 100, I don't know, something stupid for this big box. So I'm going to have to cut this box down a fair amount. We're going to cut that length off and we're going to cut about, I don't know, three inches or so of this height off, get this box down a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back again. Okay, we'll jump in here midway and show you what's going on. I got this bubble wrap a little bit, just give it a little bit of protection. This thing's not going to get messed up inside. There's a lot of actual space inside the box for the, uh, for the model to be protected, but we'll throw some extra bubble wrap on there. Uh, I've got one end cut off the box already, and I've scored the ends, I've scored the sides. So we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna fold down that end right there, and we're gonna fold in this side right there. And then I need to take that label off, but we're gonna fold this side. Ooh, my line's a little bit low. Let me redo my line over here. Right there. Right there is where we're doing that line. <clears throat> and I'm going to have the main part of the box done. Of course, I'm still going to have to put something on the end. I'm not going to just leave it open like that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get this taped up and we'll come back and I'll show you the uh, finished product. How does that sound? Right, here's the final product. Check this thing out. I think I packed this thing up really nice. Minimized any excess size we have. It's padded up in there pretty well and it ended up costing me $22.27 through UPS Ground. So I charged $20 for shipping. I thought it might cost me a lot more than that. I'm perfectly fine with spending that extra $2.27. It probably took me, I'll say maybe 10 minutes. Uh, you know, I had to come back and film some of this and do some of this other stuff and keep going to the other room as I was cooking some hamburgers at the time. Uh, so yeah, it ended up uh, costing me 22 bucks, and I think I did a pretty fantastic job boxing this one up. Have a little more taping to do but i'm almost done i did also sell three items 
this morning. I'm not going to ship those today because they don't have to go out technically until tomorrow. Uh, so I didn't include them in today's total, but I'm going to show you those just because uh, one of them was one of the, my promoted listings. I finally sold one of the items that I ended the listing, relisted it, and I promoted it. I promoted all those things at 4%. If you remember, I picked, I think it was like 15 or 20 items. I don't remember the exact amount now. I started it two weeks ago. I'm doing it as a month uh, test. Little, little thing see what happened. And I sold my little football or rugby little uh, protective helmet. This is like a little padded helmet. You see like that guy right, oh, that guy right there wearing one so he doesn't bonk, bonk noggins with that guy while they're playing. Uh, this is going international. And although it didn't show the country, when I click on the, the buyer's name, it st still said United States, but this said international shipping. So I'm a little confused by that. But either way, I'm shipping it to Illinois and they'll get this to uh, where it's going. What did it sell for? I think, oh, it sold for 20 bucks. $20 plus shipping for that little helmet. So one out of my 20-ish or whatever it was items from my little experiment has sold. So that's pretty good. Now, I hope this microphone's still working. I haven't charged it in a while. I did test it before I started, but I don't know how long it's going to last. Green light's still on, so that's good. It's a good sign. I'm going to guess that it's working. All right, another item that sold, this right here. This is a popcorn bucket from Disneyland. Yeah, this is uh, the Skyliner. Guardians of the Galaxy Skyliner. So you got all the guys there. You got uh, Star-Lord and Gamora. And over here you got Groot and Rocket. And, oh, Groot and Rocket. Those are my guys. Those are my guys, Groot and Rocket. But I, for some reason, I just didn't really want to keep this. Because it has all the other people on there. And I, I'm more into like the figures than I am into like the other stuff. Uh, it does have the cord or whatever that you can hang around your neck so you can open this up and eat your popcorn while you walk around Disneyland. Now, Disneyland has a lot of different popcorn buckets that they've done through the years. I'm actually, uh, I have a few more down here. I'm going to do a video, I think, later this week. I don't know if it'll be out this week or next week. I'm working on it later this week about Disneyland popcorn buckets because there's a ton of them. So I have some crazy good values. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that, I think that'd be a fun video to do here later on. Later on this week, talk about some Disneyland popcorn buckets and how you can look out for them in the stores. Some of them don't even look like popcorn buckets. That's that's some of the interesting parts about them. So uh, that Skyliner sold for twenty dollars. It's about the low end of what the popcorn buckets sell at. I, I I don't think there's any that I would sell less than less than twenty bucks. Uh, the other thing, oop, actually, I didn't get it yet. Let me get it because it was a card. It was a card. It's in my huge. This is how many cards? I have more than this listed on eBay too. Uh, but I got to find the section. Where it's at, it's a baseball. Oh, flipped right to it pretty quick. Now, some of you might say, Mike, why don't you number all the cards? Why don't you put them in there? I don't need to. They're, they're in there. I can find them less than 30 seconds. I can find pretty much any card that I sold on eBay in that box. Now, has there been a few that's kind of been in the wrong section and it's taken me a couple minutes? To find? Yes, it happens, but not too often. All right, we got Al K line jersey card, Tiger Great Al K line. Tigers were just here in Arizona. Uh, playing uh, baseball. <laughs> That's what they play. Uh, got a story about that here in a second. Uh, they beat us two games. We beat them last night. So it didn't go so great for the D-backs. But uh, $20. So I had three $20 sales this morning, including Mr. K-Line jersey card. Uh, so good start to the day. 60 bucks in sales already. Okay, so I said two stories. First one, the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks game. Uh, my wife won tickets from her work to go to the Diamondbacks game this weekend. Yay, we're going to go to the game on Saturday, right? She invited a friend and her friend's son. We're going to go meet. We drive down there. We're getting ready. To, we get in the area. We're going to try to find some parking. It is a zoo. It's packed. The roads are packed. We're probably about 15 minutes before uh, the game starts, and we're trying to find parking. Everything's full. Everything's full. Everything's full. We're driving around. Honestly, I haven't been to a Diamondbacks game in a few years. And a couple of the lots that I used to park at, they're not lots anymore. They have buildings on them. they got, like, condos or an industrial building. So... It's been a few years since I've been down there. Uh, at this point, we're driving around for 15 minutes. My wife's friend's already sitting out front waiting. It's 100 degrees outside. I don't want them to wait. I dropped my wife off right near the front. She walked up. I said, I'll go find some parking, and I'll come back. I never found parking. Uh, I got stuck in more traffic after about another 15 minutes of driving around trying to find it. I messaged her. I said, I'll come back after the game and pick you up. I was... I don't know about you guys, but sitting around in traffic and trying to find parking and you're running late, not a lot of fun. So I got a little frustrated. Uh, luckily, they were there for, they, I think they only stayed for about five innings or so. It was 0-0. Zero, zero. She told me it was a horrendous, boring game for five innings. Uh, and then uh, I went back to, to get her. Now, right after they left, 
some runs sc scored and the Tigers ended up winning. So uh, it's probably a good thing that I didn't go anyways. They, they, they played horribly. Uh, so yeah, that's my baseball story for the weekend. I was excited to go to a game. I hadn't been to that Max game in a while. And uh, yeah, that, that, that happened. So the next, the garage sale. Yeah, I got some garage sale footage that uh, I did from the weekend. We did a garage sale on Saturday. Now, it was kind of a last minute thing. The only reason why I did a garage sale is because we got some new appliances in our kitchen. The refrigerator went out for Mother's Day. My wife got a new whole ref not refrigerator and a whole kitchen set. Dishwasher, uh, stove, microwave. We got all that. So we had all the old appliances. I said, great. I'll try to sell them on Marketplace or OfferUp or one of those. Put, put a couple uh, posts out there. Didn't get a single response for them, which is weird. Because anytime I've tried to sell appliances before on there, they've gone quickly. So I said, you know what? I've got some other stuff in the garage that's bigger and bulkier that I want to get rid of, plus a lot of smalls, just stuff that hasn't sold in my booth, maybe not quite good enough for eBay, maybe a little bit damaged, whatever it was. Bunch of junk. Let's have a quick garage sale Saturday morning. I'm not going to spend too much time and effort for it. Uh, I did a table that was a dollar table. I did a $5 table and then uh, one table where I priced just a couple things. And then everything else I just kind of put out there with, with price tags on it. Pretty quick and easy. Uh, I think I woke up at like 5.30 that day. We were done by about 11, so it wasn't that long of a day. Uh, and we pretty much got what I wanted accomplished, which was sold a lot of the, the stuff that I had sitting in the garage and uh, wanted gone. Unfortunately, nobody bought the dishwasher. Nobody bought the microwave. Now, right at the end, someone did come and buy the stove. So that was good. The stove went. Only 50 bucks for a stove. It was still in great condition. It actually worked. We just replaced it because it was part of the package that we bought. Uh, it was one of our neighbors. Uh, couple streets over that bought out you know so i'm happy that somebody near us has got it and is going to use it uh but yeah let's uh let's roll the footage really guys really guys you lost the footage well i guess my guys in the booth lost the footage to the garage sale so i don't have any garage sale footage but like i said it went pretty well i didn't make a ton of money i mean i i think we did 200 and some dollars which I said anything over $100 plus the appliances, you know, what we got for those uh, was good for me. And uh, so, yeah, so now I got some spending cash in my pocket for the next few weeks that I don't have to worry about going to the ATM to get any money out. So that was my Saturday. And uh, do I have anything else to show back here? Actually, a uh, couple things. I always got to show a couple of cool pickups. Uh, the other day they brought a cart out as I was walking through a store so i got this cool toy story 2 buzz light year no, toy story 2 that was a wild what is the year on this thing glasses you, see, but again glass just glasses don't do it i haven't put the link down below for this thing guys if you need a magnifier this thing is great this was from what year is it where is the year oh my goodness this is great the year is 1999 Toy Story 2 was in 1999. Does it feel like it was that long ago? Guys, that was a long time ago. That was 25 years ago. <laughs> that was 25 years ago, 1999. Uh, but it's also got a Zipline Rescue Buzz figure in there. And uh, and that monkey. I don't remember the monkey from the movie. But uh, new and sealed. I don't know if it's worth a lot or $10. But it's Toy Story 2. 25-year-old toy. If it's worth more than... $20, I'll throw a pop-up on the screen. Otherwise, it's soon, just call it $20 or less. Uh, something else I picked up. This actually I bought off of Whatnot. I bought off John, the Cincinnati picker. CP. Uh, he's been running some Whatnot auctions. And, of course, local team here. Boom. Arizona Diamondbacks number 51. Do you know who that is? Randy Johnson. The big unit. Hall of Famer Randy Johnson. Now, this is an old, this is an old jersey. Rawlings tag. They, didn't, they only made these like the first couple years of the Diamondback. So right there, Rawlings tag. Uh, this is, I think it was a good size, size 40. So uh, yeah, I think I paid like 60 some dollars, I think from his auction. But I think it's probably at least a $150 jersey. I might list it for a little bit more, just depending on what's out there. There are some sales that have been like 200 bucks for these. Uh, you don't find these jerseys too often. Now it did have a couple small little spots on it. I'm going to wash it, see if I can get them out, put a little shout on it, see if I can get those spots out. But yeah, I think that's a pretty cool pickup. Uh, local team, but I'll, I will list that on eBay. All right, this video is in that range of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get these videos to be like between 20 and 25 minutes. I think this one might be a little bit longer. Uh, but I'm, gonna, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Who's still here? Raise your hand. He's still here. All right. My usual five. My usual five of you that are still here this long in the video. 
if you've made it to this point, that's all you need to put a comment today. I say, say I made it to the end or I made it to that point. We have milestones coming up. That's what I wanted to talk about. This channel closing in on 3,000 subscribers. Crazy, crazy. Now, I've been doing this for quite a while now. I think I'm coming up on year five. I think this year makes year five. Uh, I never really planned to have like a YouTube channel or try to do this this long. I was just kind of doing it to try to learn what YouTube was like, learn how to film videos and stuff so my daughter could do her channel and help her a little bit. And it's turned into a lot of fun for me. I've really enjoyed doing these videos, getting to talk with you guys through this screen. Uh, I've done a few chats with you. I've sent some emails to you. I've sent a lot of prizes out through the years and got to know a few of you that way. So uh, everyone that's subscribed to this channel, that's watched a video, that's put a comment down below, that's uh, support me anyway. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll do a 3,000 sub giveaway. I'm going to have to find something cool for 3,000 subs. That's that's pretty amazing. I never thought I would get to 1,000, let alone 3,000. So uh, thank you all. Uh, that's just on this channel. On my That Card Guy channel, if you're not sub -sub, if you're not sub subbed, if you're not subscribed, go over and check out That Card Guy. Coming up on 1,100. Now, I hit 1,000 on that one earlier this year. Channel still not monetized. I need a lot of watch hours on that channel. If anybody wants to go and help really support this channel, you don't need to do it monetarily. Just go through, watch some videos on that Card Guy channel. Uh, it's not just cards that I talk about. I talk about other stuff on there too, but it's predominantly sports cards related. Uh, I found some mystery bags last week or the week before, and I've been going through and doing those videos. Had a really good one uh, in the last video. So if you haven't watched that video, go check that last one out. Uh, video number two of the series. Uh, number three of that series will be going tomorrow. Uh, so that'll be good. Uh, what else? I, I, I really have four channels. I've well, talked about this in the past. My third channel, I think is like 700 subs now. I don't even try on that channel. I put out one video and they're all almost always all shorts. I think they're all shorts on my Mike Warner. That's, that's my name, Mike, AKA. Uh, but yeah, Mike Warner, that channel, I think has got 700 subs. So that one, that one has a shot at hitting a thousand this year as well. Now, because it's shorts, you need to have like 3 million short views in a year to uh, monetize a channel. I don't expect that one to ever get monetized, but it's just fun knowing that uh, I've gotten three channels that far. Uh, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and I thank everybody for your support. Again, it's been five years. I know some of you have been around for most of that five years, and some of you have been here for like five days, so I appreciate you all too. Uh, I hope you like the content. I hope sometimes I make you laugh, and because uh, I know... I, I know my, my wife doesn't laugh at my jokes anymore, so thank you. All right, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up for today. Uh, I hope you have a great week. Come back later this week if I get that other video out about popcorn buckets. I've got a few sitting down right here that I can use as, as examples. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.